All right, guys, welcome back to the PHP 101 series. In this video, we're going to get dive just a little bit deeper into object-oriented programming. And what I want to talk about in this video is a concept called inheritance. Um, and so it's important for us to understand what inheritance is and how it works. And so we're going to do just a basic brief introduction of inheritance, and we'll get going with that. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to duplicate our last file um, of methods here. I'm going to call that inheritance. All right, so now um, we have this file open. And let's talk a little bit, okay? So we have a class. And let's say we built this class out. It's working great. Um, it does everything we need it to do. And we don't really want to make add any new functionality to this, but we've discovered something in our application that we need to do that is very similar to this, but a little bit different. So um, let's uh, most of the time you might be tempted to uh, duplicate this code and call it something else, and it would have all the same stuff, but you would keep adding. Uh, maybe a few more methods to it and maybe a few more properties. Um, this is one of the things that object-oriented programming shines at. So let me give you an example of that. So let's say I wanted to create a new class because I want a new type of object that is pretty much like this but just a little different. So I'm going to show you an example of that. What you can do is we're going to create a new class and we're going to call this one Fancy House. Okay, And this one uh, it's going to have all the same properties and methods and everything and I even want to construct it the same way. So I could go in here and I could copy this stuff and paste it in and now I could start adding my new stuff. So for instance with a fancy house I want to have a pool and we'll set that to true and I want to have uh, a garage and we'll set that equal to uh, two car garage for now. And I might want all sorts of new methods too. And the problem with this is that let's say I discovered in one of my methods later on that I needed to extend this method or make it bigger, uh, do something else, or even worse, I discover a bug in this. So I wrote something wrong in this or it's causing some ill behavior in my object or my program and I need to change this. Well, now I need to remember to go back and also change that same method inside of this fancy house class. And remember, these are most likely going to live on different uh, in different files. And so as my application grows, I might get hundreds and hundreds of these things going. And I'm not going to remember to go back and find all of these methods that need to be fixed. Okay. So this is really where object-oriented programming starts to shine because I don't need to do that. Actually, what I can do is I can do something called uh, inheritance where I actually take a parent uh, class and make a child of that class and then I can create objects from that child. So the way that we do that is um, we use the keyword extends. So instead of just doing class fancy house, what I want to do is do extends house. Okay, whoops, my pinky just twitched and it put an extra A there. So now that I created this fancy house, this fancy house is actually a child of this, of a house. Okay, so it's all grown up. This had a child and this child now is the fancy house. So now what I can do is I can actually get rid of all these methods and I can get rid of everything that's the same between the two. All right, again, guys, I just want to apologize for all the noise. It's storming and uh, snowing and stuff outside, so I couldn't leave and go to the office to shoot these videos. And my family's here, and I got some guests over, so it's, it got a little loud. But now, um, like I said, we can remove all of the properties and methods inside of this fancy house class and only add the things that are different about them. So we can have new methods and new properties 
But because this is a child of house, this actually has all of the same things. So it has temperature and door color and address, and it even has this construct uh, method, and uh, it has the heat and cool method. So let me let me show you what I mean. So house one is going to stay the same, but I want to what I want to do is say house two now instead of saying new house. This is now a new fancy house. Okay. So now let's go and uh, refresh the page. But I, instead of going to methods here, I need to go to inheritance. Um, and you can remember inheritance because it's like uh, a child inheriting something from a parent. So this is the same thing. We have a child class, uh, which is fancy house, of a parent class of house. And it inherits everything that the parent had, all the uh, properties and all the methods. So let's go now and refresh this. And we can see now that house one is still a, a house object, but house two is now a fancy house and it has a pool and a two car garage. But as you can see, it still has a temp of 60 degrees and a door color of tan and the address and all of that. It's all the same. But what happens is um, if you notice that we've run the house to cool method right here, so it's actually cooled that from 65 down to 60, which means that this actually has our heat and cool methods. Uh, the fancy house actually has those as well. So um, this is both what's awesome about object-oriented programming and what can kind of get uh, the, the things that some people don't like. And the reason that some don't, people don't like it is because imagine I'm looking at this file and all that's in this file is this fancy house. But I find a piece in my code that has used this fancy house and I look at it and it has all these other properties. I'm like, where in the world did this temp come from? And where did the door color come from? Because when I look at this, there's no temp or door color here. Well, for me, it's not that hard because if you look at the top here, it will actually extend the house. So then I just jump into that house class and look at it. I'm like, oh, I see. This is a child class of this. So as long as you understand how inheritance works, you can use this to your benefit. What you can also do with a child class is you can actually override, uh, overwrite what has happened with the parent class. So let's say, for example, uh, the fancy house has a lot more uh, hot water. So I'm just going to copy that uh, property there. And instead of a 55-gallon tank, the fancy house has an 85-gallon hot water tank. So now if I go back and refresh the page, you can see that uh, all of this stuff stays the same except for amount of hot water by default is 85 for the fancy house. And it is still uh, 55 for the regular house. So I hope that makes sense with the parent class being house. It's called inheritance because the child class, the class that extends the parent, it's an extension of the parent. It has everything the parent has unless you overwrite that or change it. Uh, in the class, it has temp and door color, and it even has the same constructor. In addition to that, um, when I instantiate a fancy house instead of a regular house, um, I also get a pool and a two-car garage. And we can actually give new methods now. So let me show you that. If I add a public function, um, and in this public function, I want to do something like, um, let's say we have another property here. And we, what we want to do is call this pool light. Because I want to know if the pool lights are on or off. And by default, they're going to be off. We don't want to waste electricity. But I have a, a function here called uh, pool lights. Um, let's see. We have a function just called, I don't know, uh, turn on pool lights, which is a long method name. So then what I can do is I can say this pool lights is equal to true. So if I run this method, uh, it's actually going to turn the pool lights from false to true. Okay, 
Um, I can have another one called public function turn off pool lights. And what this one could do is say this pool lights is equal to false. Okay? Now when I go down and I actually, uh, we will actually instantiate these and I can say, I can use those methods now on house 2 because that is a fancy house. So house 2 now has turn on pool lights. So I'm going to run that and now if I go and refresh we can see that pool lights are set to, is set to true on the fancy house. Now what happens if I try to run uh, that on house 1? Now remember house 1 is our, our regular old house and it's the parent class. So what happens if I try to run turn on pool lights uh, on, a, on our regular parent house that doesn't have a pool? Well we get an error. And we get an error because it's calling an undefined method of house. Because inheritance is only works one way. Just because a child gets a pool in these methods doesn't mean that the parent got that. It just goes the other way. So inheritance always goes from the parent down to the child class. Okay, so we, we, cannot, we cannot access things uh, in the child class uh, inside of a parent class, okay? But you can go the other way. So um, I'm going to delete that so that our, our stuff works again. And now uh, you can see that inheritance, um, a child class will inherit properties and methods from the parent class. And then you can extend this, and that keeps you from having to copy when you have similar um, when you have similar objects or you need similar objects. Uh, you can just extend the original one, okay? And you don't have to change the original one, and it gets the child class gets everything that the parent class had, so all the properties and methods, and you just do what you need to different. So imagine now this file instead of being all of this plus this is only this is only these amount of lines of code which is a lot better because now if I ever have bugs or something I know exactly where to go to fix this so if the bug is in the heat uh, method I can go and change this heat method so instead of saying two we want to warm it at four degrees at a time by default um, now the th what happens because I've done that is I fixed any bugs that may have occurred in all of my house objects and all of my fancy house objects because I've just fixed it in the parent. Okay, so I've made a change in one place and then everything that extends that also gets those changes unless we've overwritten it in the child class. Alright guys, well I hope that helps and I hope you, that helps you understand at least a basic concept and listen, I know that you guys aren't going to be able to go after this course and just start writing really uh, deep um, object-oriented programming uh, applications from doing the beginning, much like you aren't going to just watch the PHP 101 syntax and know how to build projects from it. The whole goal of this course is for you guys to understand the syntax and what's going on so that when you see these and and other courses coming up or um, in projects where you read it, you at least have an idea of what's going on. You at least know what this skinny arrow means. You know what the word class means. You know what an extends means. Um, and then in the next video, you're actually going to know what this public means, and you'll see two other options. But uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something called visibility. Because now that we have uh, inheritance, we may we may want to control uh, things inside of these classes just a little bit more. But we'll talk about that more in the next video. If you've liked this video, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe. Uh, go ahead and hit that bell notification so that you're notif notified when I release new videos. And um, if you feel like you've understood the concept uh, of inheritance, uh, go ahead and move on to the next video. If you have not, uh, re-watch this. And if you need to go back and review some of the other uh, object-oriented programming court, uh, um, videos that I've done, do so and just keep moving along in baby steps until we have a good understanding of object-oriented programming. I'll see you guys in the next video.